Today I'm going to take a look at this processor module that I found on eBay. It was only like 12 bucks with free shipping and it's from an Itanium system. Now if you're not familiar, Itanium was a failed CPU from Intel. They designed Itanium to be a 64-bit modern CPU. The branch prediction would be handled in the compiler as opposed to in real time by the processor. They lacked branch prediction hardware as far as I know and would just completely do it within their compiler and their compiler wasn't very optimized so they were really slow and they kind of failed. HP had like some super long contract with them and hell they may even still make them but for the most part uh, Itanium just died a slow death and this is the CPU module from what This has the CPU and a vo voltage regulator on the same board with a fan. I believe this is an Itanium 2, the 9050. It's a 1.6 gigahertz dual core, dual thread. So it has what is essentially hyper threading. So uh, dual, two core, four thread. It's a 533 megahertz system bus. You can see through the pin array here. And yeah, this is mostly just the mechanical stuff for it. And uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting. It was a neat design. You know, you can tell it's pulled from a server when your fan is 40 volts instead of 12 i can't even like test this out my power supply only goes to 36 so this this particular unit uses just a, a for some reason a, a four pin connector with just a, a two pin connection this is probably straight 42 volts or 48 volts or something or possibly 40 i don't, I don't know if they're uh, using separate rails for these things but it's probably taking 40 volt because these are pretty thin wires and if you look at the bottom the fuse on the input is quite small so i'm thinking this is probably a low volt or high voltage low current connection and then uh they're using the voltage regulator to drop it down to you know 1.2 volts or whatever this thing runs on it uses this weird mechanical clamp and then there's a circuit board here i assume the cpu is just soldered onto this Often what they do on really high-end server boards and kind of oddball systems where they have lots of pins, they use a second board. So they'll be the main CPU and then they uh, can easily flow that onto the, the top of the board using uh, BGA. And then they separately make all this to account for all the, uh, like the massive PCB. I mean, look at that. So yeah, see if we can get this thing apart. In terms of how this is mounted, it appears that there are four screws here. Well, I mean, I have three missing, or two missing, but there's uh, screws here that go down and attach the CPU. And then there's a couple just kind of basic screws on the sides. Processor cost around 3,600 US dollars in 2005 when this came out. So you can expect a little bit of build quality here. Not really sure why there's this bracket here. I'm not positive what it's supposed to do unless there's some more assembly, perhaps an air duct, because you can see all the, uh, there's a cast piece of aluminum or you know, some other metal, looks like aluminum. But uh, yeah, there's cast and there's uh, fins for the, or poles for the heat sinking of the VRM. And it looks like there's a big DC to DC converter, like an off the shelf DC to DC converter underneath there, which is a little unusual in a computer. I mean, often VRMs are pretty tailor built to the motherboard. So a little odd. Now these are the final screws that hold, there's a plate here to add tension and uh, it's connected to this uh, bar at the bottom. So there'll be a, uh, an actual contact here, probably. Um, I don't think it'll be, uh, I don't think it'll be pins. I think it'll be some kind of like press fit thing or possibly uh, a spring contact. And there's even some capped on tape here. So when it's installed in the board, it could potentially short out, I guess. Okay. That's the bottom plate. Again, it's insulated on this side as well. So this is basically the same sort of thing you would find on a modern LGA socket. So it's a, basically a land grid array here. And then uh, little, uh, little pads here that I'm sure are very 
delicate. A bunch of your standard VRM stuff on the bottom. You've got a planar inductor. You can see it's incorporated into the PCB. Uh, that could explain... Well, this one's not that thick, so... And we have this uh, DC to DC... Oh, HP part number. So this is this is pulled from an HP machine. No surprises there. It looks like there's a thermal pad here, a metal one. So I'm not positive if this is going to be glued or epoxied. Yeah, it's hard to tell because I, I assume they, they've soldered this down in some way, but I'm just going to go ahead and pry it. It's not like I'm putting this back together. Oh, I can see some thermal goop in there. Oh, there's a little bit of movement, but it still feels like it's uh, it's being held in by something. There we go. So that looks like a giant piece of machined aluminum. I don't think it's a vapor chamber because they're, they're usually made out of uh, copper. I don't think you really get many vapor chambers made out of aluminum, but I could be wrong on that. A little bit of thermal pad here, and this is all your standard thermal pad that's just disintegrating it. Since it's so old, Artis Artisan. As for this, we have your standard array of MOSFETs and, and, you know, VRM components, basically. It's interesting, they've got a little bit of the solder resist taken away here, so you can see some of the traces coming through. I, I imagine a few of these layers are uh, power. The thing is, there's no big traces heading across. These are probably just control signals or feedback to the... Uh, controller which is probably one of these computer type vrm it's not a standalone dc to dc converter it kind of looked like one from the side when i was first taking it apart so that was a little odd as for getting this fan in the heat sink off i've noticed that this little metal slider lines up with the four holes for the cpu but you can also push it forward to get it to line up with this crossbar so I'm going to go ahead and assume that's an important part that we got to remove. I do find it a little strange that it doesn't seem to open up for this side. I mean, obviously you can just bend it, but <laughs> that doesn't seem very well thought out. So maybe there's more to it. Maybe you're supposed to disassemble it in some way. I just don't know why you'd have to unscrew through this bracket first if it only unscrews half of the screws <laughs> i'd just like to point out that this whole assembly is like freaking crazy heavy i mean all this metal i mean i think it's hard to tell but this might i think this is nickel plated copper it looks a little duller than the rest of it even these have little bits of kapton tape for insulation nice attention to detail okay so this looks like it has a lot of thermal paste on it, and it does. How's that for a CPU? <laughs> and this looks like it. This probably does have a vapor chamber in here, because it's it's very heavy. So it feels like there's a big lug of metal. The uh, the fan is 0.2 amps, but at 40 volts, that's a probably a pretty damn fast fan. It has this handwritten note. So on this, we have the, the land grid array, as we saw before, connected. Oh, must, uh, maybe that's for heat dissipation, because I think this, this goes here. Yeah, so this must all be for heat dissipation, which is weird because it's insulated. SLA B6, and then it's 1.6, 24 megs of cache, 533, oh, it says 400, although the 400 may refer to memory or something. And, uh, yeah, we just have this gigantic chip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off all this thermal paste and uh, try to get the IHS off. Well, this might be a pretty destructive removal of this IHS. As you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't really say much on this thing. It just says 06 titanium. But this hole tells me that this is a soldered heat sink. So that huge die in there... It's going to be soldered on. So what I'm going to try and do is just go around like roughly, I, you know, this is going to be pretty rough removal, but I'm going to go around the edge and just uh, try and cut all the, the epoxy around the edge and then uh, heat up the chip, see if I can just get the whole thing to fall right off. It took a lot of hot air, but I did get the integrated heat spreader off. I'm surprised it's not a chip on a PCB and it's actually, uh, you know, this is the actual chip. 
that's uh well i mean like the processor uh the the silicon is actually bonded right to this huge pcb which then goes straight through to the pin uh, i don't think i've seen that with chips this or uh with pcbs this big before so that's pretty impressive um i don't think that's particularly common these days the uh yeah the low temperature solder is is pretty easy to melt it's just a matter of getting enough heat into it to take off the uh, actual top of it but I, i've got a new hot air gun so that helped a lot i did a little surgery on this to uh, kind of see how it was constructed a bit more uh, it looks like there's definitely a pretty big vapor chamber inside that and there's this plastic shell with a, a spring and then there's a little clip so you can actually just pop out the the fan hub and uh replace it which is pretty cool but this this screw is like i don't know if they like cranked it in with a, a machine or if it's like heat fit or something but yeah that ain't coming out can't get any further on this you can see through the fins just barely just how big of a section there is for the uh that big vapor chamber so yeah pretty impressive fan that's why it's so freaking heavy well, that's it for this thing. I really just wanted to see how big the uh, actual silicon was. So it was pretty impressive compared to other chips at the time. But now, I mean, that's like the size of probably a little bit smaller than my 2080 Ti. But for a CPU, that's freaking huge, especially one that's just two cores. I think it's mostly taken up by the, uh, the level two cache, which was probably pretty inefficient in its space for the time, uh, just because I think this is on a 90 nanometer process. Interesting nonetheless.